This is a brief video about my restoration of a 35-year-old Ogawa Seiki OS FS24 stroke glow engine and the use of some old school RPM measurement gadgets uh, to look at RPM on this engine. This engine was purchased off of eBay in 2024. It had run uh, quite a bit and was found to have the intake valve stuck in the open position. These are the, some of the instruments for measuring RPM I'll discuss towards the end of the video. There are any number of videos on the internet showing the disassembly of the OS engines, so I won't spend a lot of time on that. Uh, the left panel shows the cylinder head with the exhaust valve removed. You can see the carbon buildup on the lower part of the valve. Uh, the bearings, although they rolled uh, easily, were corroded and the crankshaft was found to be in good condition. This is another view of the head with the valves in place. The intake is uh, along the right and the exhaust is at the top of the photograph. The panel on the right shows the cylinder head uh, before cleaning with the intake valve, which can be seen to be quite clean. After everything had been cleaned up, as this engine was uh, a well-used engine, I lapped the valves in place using a cotton applicator that was hot glued to the valve uh, and silver polish as a lapping compound. Uh, gentle lapping by rotating the cotton swab back and forth until a nice clean shiny strip was visible both on the valve and on the valve seat. Uh, cleaning up the assembly after this uh, procedure is very important. Compliments of Clarence Lee in Radio Control Magazine back in the 80s. Uh, the operational diagram, the OS FS20 engine, can be seen. The intake duration is 290 degrees of crankshaft rotation. The exhaust duration is 260 degrees. And now we'll go through each of the cycles. This is the intake cycle of the OS FS20 engine. We're going to assume a clockwise rotation of the crankshaft for these diagrams. The intake duration is 290 degrees. The intake opens 55 degrees before piston top dead center and it closes at 55 degrees after bottom dead center. This is the exhaust diagram for the FS20 engine. The exhaust duration is 260 degrees of crankshaft travel. The exhaust opens at 125 degrees after piston top dead center and closes at 25 degrees after piston top dead center. Common to many four stroke engines, the FS20 engine has valve overlap where both the intake and exhaust valves are open at the same time. This is called valve overlap, and its function is to aid in the scavenging of the exhaust gases out of the combustion chamber. This is the compression cycle of the FS20 engine. It begins when the intake is closed, and it ends when presumably the cylinder fires with the piston at top dead center. It is 125 degrees of crankshaft rotation. This is the power stroke diagram of the FS20 engine. It begins when the fuel air mixture is ignited, presumably at top dead center, and ends at 125 degrees of crankshaft rotation when the exhaust valve opens. These diagrams are just another way to look at the different cycles of a four-stroke engine, including the concept of valve overlap. So I got the engine put back together, put it on a test stand uh, using a 9x5 master air screw propeller. Uh, I had some 20-year-old 15% nitro, 17% oil glow fuel around. Uh, with the degradation over the years, it's probably 5% nitro with 25% oil, which is ideal for running this old engine. 
I ran the engine with and without a muffler, and I did not use uh, fuel tank pressure. I used a laser tachometer to measure the RPM with uh, reflective tape on the backside of both blades to make sure I got the best signal, and an infrared temperature gun to survey uh, the temperatures on the running engine.
So in the old days, how did they measure RPM on small engines, uh, particularly at the times in the 30s and 40s uh, without batteries or the need for electrical power? Uh, luckily, I have two uh, rather interesting instruments. One is called the strobometric tachometer, which uses a clockwork to drive a shutter to freeze the rotating or the vibrating mechanism. And I'll explain that momentarily. The second is a little more modern, but it's a serometer, which uses a resonance-based technology with the length of a wire to determine the power impulse of an engine or vibrating machine. I became aware of the strobometric tachometer while rebuilding and researching the World War II drone engines. Uh, shown in the left panel is the 1942 radio plane OQ-2 radio-controlled aerial gunnery target. And there's notations in the manual for the use of the tachometer to measure uh, proper static RPM on the engine before it was launched by catapult. The strobometric tachometer that I have was produced by the Boolin Instrument Corporation of New York, New York in the late 30s. It comes with a variety of black discs, which are the shutters. These discs have a varying number of slots in them, as well as varying uh, widths of the slots. And this allows tailoring of the device to measure a wide range of RPM and vibratory modes. The secret to the Strobomeca is the hand-wound spring clockwork, which is gear-driven to drive the shutter. This is rather ingenious because the clockwork provides a constant torque and that the speed within limits of the shutter can be adjusted aerodynamically and centrifugally inside of the housing. Shown here in the left panel is the eyepiece, which is basically a flat glass panel that looks completely through the instrument without magnification. Uh, the spring winding star wheel and the arm which mounts the uh, discs, the shutter discs. Uh, you can see that there is a spring assembly with some fly weights. And again, this is to modulate the speed or RPM of the spindle.
This is the tracet serometer. It's basically a stiff wire wound inside the plastic casing, and the wire can be uh, extended out until a resonant frequency of the wire with the vibrating component is matched. At that time, the wire will uh, vibrate quite vigorously, and the RPM or frequency can then be read off the serometer. The advance of technology is a wonderful thing, but it is interesting to note that both the strobometric tachometer and the tracet serometer tachometer read within 6% of the values derived by laser tachometers or spark impulse tachometers and are a testament to the creativity of the engineers and designers of years past. Once I was done running the engine, I wanted to preserve it. So I removed the glow plug, the rear cover, the rocker box cover, and the cam box cover. Uh, into those areas, I sprayed fogging oil, uh, lots of it, rotated the engine a few times, uh, let it sit for 10 minutes, and then drained the fogging oil out passively. Then I went back and lubricated all of those areas with a paraffinic turbine oil, uh, rotated the engine a few times, and put the covers back on. Thanks for watching this video, and if anybody wants to reach me, my email address can be found in the lower right corner. Thank you.